all right, we're going live now. That's not really a black stereotype. It's like a malt liquor ice beer. <laughs> ice beer stereotypes. And yeah, you, know, like, more. you wear the tank top and you got a little attitude problem. All right, folks, tonight. Yeah. Tonight. Hopefully I won't get kicked off my own hangout. Uh, we're looking at Bud Ice and Natural Ice and Bush Ice, the Anheuser-Busch Power Trio. The Ice Beers Power Trio, I might add. Courtesy of William Kepley, his house of ideas. Now, I'm kind of down tonight and depressed because um, my daughter fell last night and she cut her leg. Her, cut her leg at her knee real bad. This is the third time in three years she's fallen and cut herself. She's in the hospital. I hope she's doing okay, Jay. I know, second night, she's gonna go home tomorrow, I guess, and they got the, she fell and like her knee went into this puddle or something, it was all dirty and they had to suck all the stuff out. They can't even put stitches or anything for like a week and they got to, they had to do some kind of surgery last night. So it's like a nightmare, you know, I need to drink. I feel like I want to drink ice beer and wine and then whiskey and then more ice beer and then more wine and then more whiskey. But that's not a good idea. You know, you don't cope with problems with alcohol. But I, I mean, of course, a lot of people do. But um, sometimes so, it does make the mood a little better. But I understand. You've seen her in videos that I've done probably, huh? Yes. And she was going to drive out here and then probably do some videos. But now with this knee. I don't oh nice smoke. I don't know what's gonna happen. So she's got the same thing that I have, and you know, Tanya Makowski has the same problem in a different aspect, this Ellers Donlow syndrome, which is terrible. And your your skin is thin like tissue paper. Mm. And then Tanya's got it where her skin isn't bad, but all her internal organs are screwed up and all her joints are screwed up and all her her internal ligaments are screwed up. So it's it's like hell, you know. You're in const. You're. It's, I don't want to get into all of it, but it's like Tanya said she had a headache for like six straight years, and sh the doctors think it's related to the Ellers Donlow syndrome. Okay, I see a lot of bush ice. We cannot get that here. We can get it in maybe Memphis, Tennessee, Pensacola. Yeah, some remote parts of Texas, uh, but not in Louisiana and Pensacola. I have to drive the Pensacola to get mine, so, but. Okay. What are you drinking tonight, John? What do you say? What are you drinking tonight? Um, I got both, actually. I got Natty, and uh, also I got Bush, uh, excuse me, Bud Ice. And we had Bush Ice actually two years ago. Actually, one of the third or, or fourth videos I started when I started doing beer reviews, I was able to do, um, I, I was able to find Bush Ice easily, and for some reason, it just left Mobile. It was only at one or two convenience stores, Here and then boom, gone, left. So I'm, I'm drinking. And, out, um, hold on a second. I'm drinking mine out the 18 ounce brown bottle. You don't see Bud Ice in a brown bottle too much. I wish they would go to a brown. No, bottle. very rarely. Twelve ounce cans or the bottles. Excuse me. Okay. Mississippi, Mississippi. I can see that in Mississippi, Jay. Yeah. I got a fresh sample on mine. Uh, Julian date is 181. So mine is quite fresh. Wow. Mine says 17194. I just put oh, mine you back. Yours is even better than mine. I just put mine back in the fridge, but I think it's pretty fresh. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Sean. My mind ain't working right tonight. My mind ain't right tonight. I understand. I totally understand. Um, I was going to say uh, I have the same uh, same calendar on, with you guys. It says uh, January 11th, 2019 for, 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 for Natty Ice. For, and my, mine was brewed in Cartersville, Georgia, which is v, the first letter of the second set of numerals will give you the brewery that works brewed at. You said the first letter? The first letter of the second set of... Uh, yeah. And what did you say V stands for, William? V is Cartersville, Georgia. This came from Georgia. Okay. That's where mine came from. And this one has a B, a letter B. Baldwins Baldwinsville? Couldn't tell you. Benton Harbor. 
Mine says a B. B, B as well for the butt ice. For the butt ice. I believe that's the Baldwinsville, New York. Hi, I'm Goldilocks. What's a scientific way to tell that your bed is terrible for... Sorry about that. Um, Goldilocks. Okay. Now, um, I can't remember my... I have to go look my date, but I think my bottle was fresh. Um, Bud Ice is like super popular around here. Okay, Bud Ice is the original. It came out in 1994. For a long time, Anheuser-Busch website was saying 1984. I knew that was wrong. So I wrote an email to Anheuser-Busch and I told them, I said, your, your website's wrong. And they were saying, what do you mean? And uh, I explained it to them and then the lady wrote back a few weeks later and, or a week later, she said, we started doing research and we realized you were right. So they, they updated the website. <laughs> <laughs> did they, hey, Jay, did they give you a check and say, thank you, sir? No. Oh, darn. But it is the truth. It is the truth. And I wrote a letter to uh, Sazerac about ancient age. They had the wrong date on theirs, too, and they said they were going to research it. I, I provided a lot of evidence, and they were saying, oh, wow, they couldn't believe it, you know, because they were saying ancient age came out in 1946. And I told them I had documents showing that it was probably 1936. And they said, oh, wow. Um, but but anyway, Bud Ice came out in 1994. It was part of the Budweiser family for a long time, but they've since separated it from the Budweiser family for some odd, odd reason. Um, in 1995, they introduced two new ice beers because Bud Ice was so successful. And there was a Bud Ice light for a while, but that was discontinued around 2008. But they introduced natural ice in 95, and it went national in 96. They introduced Bud Ice, uh, I mean, Bush Ice in 95, and it never did go national. It stayed regional. Uh, Bush Ice and natural ice are virtually identical. They're not identical, but they're virtually identical. 5.9% alcohol, similar calorie count, similar ingredients, similar uh, marketing approach. Bud Ice is the more premier, uh, if you want to call it premier, but it is actually sold at a little bit more premier level. Um, anyway, so we'll go around the, the, the room and try to get things going here. Uh, Bill, what did you pick for the oh, uh, Williams idea of the Anheuser-Busch Ice Beers Power Trio? Well, Bud Ice is, is of the three, is, is the one that I've already had. But so I took this opportunity to sample a new one and I got natural ice. Minus so. the meringues, yep. ESPN Sports Update. <laughs> Go, keep going, Bill. Sorry. Keep going. Uh, all right. So, so I went for the Natty Ice. Um, uh, and um, uh, interesting experience here, really. Uh, um, smooth, clean, crisp, refreshing, um, pretty nondescript in terms of flavor, but, but, you know, very smooth, nothing off about it. Um, pretty good, pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my general uh, attitude toward natural ice. That's why I've been drinking it off and on since 1996. It doesn't bring a lot to the table. It doesn't bring anything bad to the table, you know what I mean? In my experience, it doesn't like it doesn't have any turn off qualities. It's just like something you would drink if you were eating popcorn or a ham sandwich or uh, maybe some soup with soup crackers and and a little bit of salad. People, uh, in my opinion, they don't like look at things in the right context because somebody was attacking me saying, oh, you're stupid because you said that nat natural ice was an excellent beer. I said, excellent for what it is. I didn't say it's like at the level of Pliny the Elder or, you know, Chimay Redcap. I'm saying for what it is, a cheap, inexpensive, uh, every man, everyday man beer, it's fine. I mean, every beer ain't, you know, every movie is not art house, um, what do you, uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, Hannah and her sisters. Are, you know, some movies are just like average movies, and they're okay, I guess. I don't watch movies, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, I agree with you, Ron. I mean, is 
like I say, there's nothing distinctive about it, but there's nothing bad about it either, right? So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, pours as you would you would expect, right? Straw gold head goes away, uh, tastes pretty smooth, hangs hangs in there for a little bit, and then kind of just goes on its way. Good good deal. Right. It's not the Godfather Part Two, but it's not Plan Nine from Outer Space either. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to talk about mine real real quick. I'm drinking Bud Ice. Um, same type thing, even milder because it's only 5.5. Smooth, easy going, just like something to drink. But it has little characteristics, and I'll probably put it into the Taste Challenge series that y'all might have noticed I've been doing a lot of Taste Challenge action lately, which people seem to love. They claim, now... Anheuser Busch claims that Bud Ice is the first draft beer, packaged draft beer, to be given the ice brew process. Now, that can only mean to me that it's cold filtered and not pasteurized. Why they chose to make it an ice, a, a draft beer, I don't know. But they, they, they do produce other draft beers, Michelob Golden Draft and Michelob Golden Draft Light. They are never pasteurized. They're cold filtered, but you can't get them unless you live around Minnesota or some obscure areas around Chicago. So, um, but they've got the ability to do it. Now we're going to go over. Uh, we're going to get to everybody, and and I think some other people are joining. And Eric, if you could do me a favor, could you post the link to this in Alcohol Eggs? Because some people, if you send them the direct invite, they can't join. You got to post a link. You want? Or vice versa. Like Michael Jennings said, he said uh, would like to join, even though he doesn't have any. Uh, I can I can put the link. I can try to put the link over there. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, if you could put it in Beer Talk also. And beer post. Talk and Alcohol Lake, sure. Yeah, probably so it's already in Beer Talk, but I'll repost that. No, you don't have to repost it if it's already there. Just put it in Alcohol Eggs. Uh, uh, Jean, you you're drinking the uh, natural, right? I have the natural, and um, for whatever the reason. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just a personal thing. I don't know what it would naturalize. I think I get a very odd feeling with natural with the naturals than I did with the bud ice. Uh, I mean, with the bush ice. Um, both of them are five point nine percent, and I just had a little queasy feeling with this one. Whoa. The bush ice was refreshing. So unfortunately, bush ice is no longer here in Mobile. But I've had both of these, uh, um, all three of them actually, and. I tend to lean more towards the butt ice uh, because of the, the amount of alcohol in it. But again, refreshing, crisp, and again, it makes a big difference versus keeping it in your refrigerator for several days versus um, be, being in the freezer. When you have it in your refrigerator, you taste, you know, it warms up pretty quickly, particularly when you pour it down. Having it in the freezer, pouring it down, okay, Jay. You, you really taste, it tastes a lot better out of the freezer than it does out of the refrigerator. So, and that's why they say keep it, freeze it. So, <laughs> so, well, but, actually, uh, yeah, I, go ahead, Jay. That's weird, you know, um, maybe, but it doesn't have any, but you finally had some like little weird flavors out of the, no, it was, just, it just, for whatever reason, I just felt kind of queasy when I, when I had it. And then I, like I said, I kept it in the freezer, had it, poured it down. It was all right, but I just felt like a little man, just, just one a hanger, a little bit of a hangover. No, no, about if I had like a couple, Okay. Say I've had about maybe like three of them. You know, I'm sitting out. You know, my backyard. Like, ooh, you know, where you know, and with the bush ice, I had like a few of those, and then I didn't feel anything. Uh, and that's when we had bush ice. Uh, with, with bud ice, it's completely different. Very refreshing. And that's the one I tend to get more often. That or net and or ice house, which is now back to the five point five. Um, just refreshing, perfect beer for this time of year right now as we're in the dog days of summer. Very crisp, very, like I said, it makes a big difference when it's in the freezer and you keep it in versus, you know, you have it in your refrigerator for like, you know, a couple of days, whatever, you know. So, but it's a, it's a very, very, very good ice beer. And that's my comment. And Jay's gone. Got to take out of the little chat again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we haven't. Uh, we haven't mentioned. You can't blame me. I don't have the link to this, so if anybody else can 
that that has the I'm on Nate's computer. So if anybody else has the link to put this on alcohol legs, that would be cool for Jay. Um, but anyways, Nate bought a f how much was this? How much did this come to Nate? Two dollars and twenty cents of a forty of the natural ice. Now on my way over yes. to Nate's place, I tried to see if I could find. Um, Bud Ice, I know I can get it in, in my town, but on the on the way to Nate's, I couldn't find any Bud Ice, which I do end up preferring more than the natural ice. And I went on the Bush website to try to find Bush Ice, and I would have had to go f almost 20 minutes in the opposite direction of Nate's to go and try to grab it, and I didn't want to go all ends of the earth just to get an ice beer, but... Good man. As, Good man, Eric. As far as the natural ice is concerned, it, it, it kind of looked like... It kind of looked like Jean's at, at first with the bigger with the bigger white head on it, and then it obviously dies to not much of anything. Uh, you know, bubbles just like a no it just kind of looks like a normal premium adjunct lager. Nate was talking about it as a clean smell, which it does. You can tell it's got a little bit of the corn, a little bit of a corn sweetness, and a grainy paperiness. For me, it has that typical almost like that light freezer burn ish kind of a smell to it. But I mean, overall, it is clean, like. Nate was saying, and I would say the taste is probably just about the same, really. Mm. Um, you can get the corn sweetness. You can, again, you can get that grainy paperiness. These these ice beers from probably the ice brewing process seem to have that little twinge of that freezer burn ish thing. Like if you ever had food and the water that was frozen on the food ever um, evap or not evaporate but melted it has that kind of a kind of a um, liquid taste about it but this one's very light it's it's generally inoffensive but you know for what it is it is good but as a beer overall I don't normally if ever really buy it I don't know if you have anything else to add to that Nate I, I tend to agree with everything Easy enough to drink, and at 5.9, it's not quite malt liquor, high gravity, but, you know, it is online with a lot of the standard kind of malt liquors that are out there on the market right now. Well, I, we're getting back to your point, Eric and Nate. Um, I think when they raised the ABV for both Milwaukee's Best or Ice House, and, and I don't know if they did up where you guys are, um, that was kind of teetering on that malt liquor, you know, uh, territory. And I think that was probably one of the, probably not one of the best decisions that Miller made. Um, 5.9. Yeah. You could say it's the ABV making it, I guess could be viewed as a malt liquor. I don't know. Um, it, to me, I guess it, to me is more of a lager to me than, than a malt, you know, if, if it's, you know, on that brink of a malt liquor, but you know, Teach his own, I guess. I don't. I don't really. I don't. To me, I, I kind of view. I kind of see that the malt liquors and the ice beers practically have the same kind of a kind of a marketing tool. I, I see that the. I'm not trying to say anything derogatory towards any kind of people out there in the world, but I see like the no. same people that probably buy that natural <laughs> ice, natty ice, probably do buy malt liquors and drink them on. You drink them kind of. I don't want to say regularly, but they drink. A malt liquor as frequently as they would drink something like a natural ice they wouldn't really think about going to a store either buying a 40 of the malt liquor or an ice beer like this one or buying um, an 18 ounce can or a six pack if you get six pack of malt liquors and really treating it or viewing it any different than than a malt liquor out there well I mean especially at 220 for a 40 which may be expensive in other parts of the country for this, but this is like nothing for for that right. amount of beer. It's you know it's very inexpensive and it's got uh, a kick of five point eight percent, five point nine, yeah, five point nine to it. Yeah. So I mean, you know, if that's if you're on a budget for something like that and you want you want something with a kick in the ABP, then that's probably the way know, to go, right? Yeah. Right. Sorry about right. that, guys. Uh, I knew when I had done a little setting incorrectly that it was going to kick me off. And uh, Internet Explorer is extremely slow tonight. Not that it's actually ever fast, because um, mm -hmm. it's notoriously slow, as we know. 
Um, so I will try to read the comments. Jacob Miller wanted to join, and I, I tried to invite him, and then like a thousand Jacob Millers came up, and uh, I can't find his icon with the little J. He said he wasn't able to post it to Facebook. That is bizarre because I post stuff like that to Facebook. You just right click, copy, put paste, boom, there it is. Hold on, Jacob. Let me uh, send you up. Now William's going to talk. <laughs> So Nate, you find that they all these are kind of like similar in the taste? That all all of these beers, we we just have the one here. We just no, have, but I mean, you know, these ice beers like Bush Ice. This will be my first, uh, so I haven't got a real good basis for comparison. I've had. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is like your first time drinking mm -hmm. ice beer. Yeah. Wow. Really? That is bizarre. The ones that I've had between. Then the natural ice, I've had Bud Ice numerous times, uh, Molson Ice, and I guess the only other one I've had was the Genesee Ice. I find that this one Genesee. is the least offensive of those, and I find that for me, somewhere between Bud Ice and Molson Ice probably have the most amount of flavor and body and substance, you know, to it. Yeah. I like the, I really... If I was more in my area and wasn't going to backtrack to get over to where Nate lives, I totally would have bought some Bud Ice because I find that to be a really great example of a even just a plain old premium lager. Now, really Mike, great one. now Michael, before we go to William, Michael, you're on a, a trip. We won't give your info away. Did you get an ice beer in your destination? I, I have to confess I didn't have – time to get an ice beer in my location so i'm more here as an observer but i but i will say the ice beer that i enjoy if that's all right oh, where go for it man you got the floor jay yeah. left okay no i went to get more ice beer <laughs> oh okay <laughs> so the one that i buy when i'm at home it's it's uh labat ice uh that's another good one well yeah. there you got kicked off again but keep going so it's Labatt Ice. It's 5.6% alcohol. It's been around for quite a while now. Um, in Ontario, where I live, uh, I can only get it in cases of 24. So I tend not to buy it too frequently. Uh, but it's the one that I prefer. Uh, it, it's got sort of a, uh, sort of a full flavor uh, to it, a graininess. Um, but, but I like it. Labatt Ice. Yeah, has anyone found Labatt Ice? Yeah, but I get that stinking version from uh, New York, you know? Hey, Michael, th th there's always been like a sort of debate, you know, on who created it first. You know, uh, Molson said they created it first, Molson Ice. Labatt say they had the patent. They say they were the first with Labatt Ice. So. That was always been the, like the debate since they're the ones who say, quote unquote, created the, the, the ice beer movement. And then coming down to America with Ice House and then Bush and, you know, everything else from there. So, you know, so what, what, who was, so who's right, Labette or Molson? I don't know. Well, yeah, I know <laughs> they both uh, lay claim to it. Uh, Labette, Ice, uh, and all their marketing. Uh, they talk about it as the world's first ice beer. So uh, who is the first? I'm not sure, but that's what Labatt says. They're the, the world's You first know what? First the, first, the first people to really discover um, freezing a beer raises its alcohol temperature by freezing it and then scraping off the layer of, of ice and then it raising alcohol percentage was the Germans and they had that beer they had that beer style called ice box. So this goes centuries and centuries back. Ice brewing is not really a new phenomenon in the world of beer. That's right. Now William okay. William, what are you drinking? Mine's about gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh one thing I noticed interestingly about these products is that all of the Miller Coors products use malt as their second ingredient for their malt liquors and ice beers. All of the AB products use corn, and I think that's reflecting in the taste difference between these. These taste quite different to me than the Miller Coors products in this same category. I think these are much lighter in flavor. They're smoother, milder, 
probably drinkability is better. They don't have that cloying sweetness you can get with some of the ones that have the, the elevated malt content. All of these are super drinkable. I will say that. Pretty nondescript as far as their flavor goes. Yep. They're just uh, they're just an extension of an adjunct lager a little bit, a little bit more alcohol. These are baseline beers from a macro brewer. Bottom line, that's what they are. Yep. You know, the, they're priced as such. You know, they're not bad. You won't be thinking about them tomorrow. How great it was. They, you know, they, they are what they are. And the, like the bush, I the bush here is water, corn, dextrose syrup, and or rice, barley malt, which is the fifth ingredient. Then hops, hop extract, and malt extract, and yeast. Five point nine percent, only one hundred thirty six calories. So that's one thing I noticed is the difference between these have more of the corn flavor. Now, what are they using? Flake corn, maize, or they're using grits? I don't know. But they're using corn and they're also using a dextrose syrup, more than likely, and or. So I think that definitely reflects on the flavor difference between these and the Miller Coors products. That would be my sort of general statement about these. And I want to say that uh, next time, William, I'm going to let you talk first because I feel funny about it, making you wait so long. <laughs> I was just enjoying this. Go this is going down really easy. It's hot. I just got home <laughs> earlier, and it's. I'm about ready for my second. I'm glad I bought two. These are sold here in 16 ounce cans for 79 cents. Oh, hey, man. And I bought what, a hey, William. William, what part of North Carolina are you at right now? Uh, the Piedmont Triad, Greensboro, yeah. West Salem. Uh, the most central there? part of the state. Okay, so you're not near Cape Hatteras or oh, the no, I'm right? from the coast. No, okay. he's yeah. Oh, Jean Pierre it's, says Jean Pierre says ice beer is good with seafood. Yummy. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Hey, look, y'all. I'm gonna read the comments in a little bit, unless I get kicked off my own hangout again. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I want to let William talk, and then we're gonna go to Jake, uh, Eric, Alliance fan, and then Jacob Miller. Okay. Well, I'm drinking uh, along like with William. I'm drinking Bush Ice as well. Now I've had all three. I've had this. I got Bud Ice sitting right here, which is a 5.5, and I've also had Natural Ice at the 5.9. Um, I think you can't go wrong with really any of these ice beers, even the Miller products ones, like the Ice House, uh, Old Milwaukee's Ice. Really, any ice beers you really can't go wrong with. They're crisp, cool, refreshing. They're like with this one, I'm kind of getting a little bit like what uh, Thomas Metal 75 said there about having a little bit of a papery note to it. And I'm getting that. I'm also getting a little bit of a metallic note with this. But for what it is, it's a damn good lager. That's all I got to say. You can't go wrong with any any of the three. Okay. All right. Now, William, I, I agree with you. I like them. You know, they're not like super fantastic, exploding plastic inevitable, but they're good, you know. Uh, William, mine is the 161st day of 2017, and my code is VI0548. Your v, v is Cartersville, Georgia. That was the brewery. And yours was the 161st day of the year, so it's still well within their freshness window. It's yeah. not bad. Yeah, and, and it says on here, interesting, on the front of it, it says Bud Premium Ice Lager, and on the side of the bottle, it says Ale. <laughs> right. I think in the power trio, these would be the bass player. They're sort of in the background. They're not drawing attention themselves. They're not the star of the show. They're there. They're serviceable. And they're also, I'd make an analogy, these are the utility players in baseball. No doubt. That's what they are. But that don't mean that they're useless. They're utility. And for what they are, I think that they represent good value for someone who just wants a <clears> standard <throat> beer that tastes like a beer. Okay. So they're like... I was going to name some players, but that's all right. Um, I was going to say Chase Utley. Isn't he like kind of a utility? Um, here's the old bus, Bud Ice bottle. The we, We've been getting these 18-ounce bottles for going on 20 years now, and they're always brown. This one was shaped like a bowling pin. Okay. Uh, I like it. This is the old 1999 bowling pin bottle. Uh, there is a warning, folks. I would avoid Bud Ice in a clear bottle. Yes. You risk the skunk. It'll be yes. slimy and skunky. You get it in the brown bottle, it's A-OK. -okay. I'm surprised they haven't went to that yet, Brian. 
Nah, because apparently 99% of the people that buy Bud Ice in the clear bottles don't care about the skunk. They just drink it straight out. They're just drinking it straight out the bottle anyway, you know. Um, Bush Ice, I bought two cans in Kentucky, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, back uh, about two months ago. Um, we've never gotten Bush Ice here. Natural ice, everybody carries that, you know, only in cans, only in cans. We haven't gotten bottles for years, years and years. Uh, but ice, we get cans and bottles. Somebody's cleaning the house. I know it's Jean. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes Jean gets bored and he says, hey, right in the middle of this hangout, I think I'll clean my house. Um, so uh, now, Jacob, sorry about that, Jacob. I just had trouble connecting to people. It was like chaos, you know, but what's new? <laughs> Go ahead. Talk. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't think about going out of my way to get this beer because I know the alcohol store that I go to has butt ice and the clear bottle every time I go, and it has natural ice in the 25 ounce can every time I go. Right. Mm -hmm. So I walked there yesterday and they have neither. Oh. All they have is natural ice in the 30 pack. Oh. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. So I had to think outside of the box and I got uh, their competitor, Ham's Eye. <laughs> you are a liar. It's just Ham's, but. That's some great labeling. You are a liar. You are a liar. <laughs> now, I have a bunch of cans over here that used to be ice beers, but they failed. Uh, years ago, they used to make Schlitz ice, which was fine. Uh, they had Paps ice. Uh, natural Bohemian, National Bohemian Ice, Natty Bo Ice. Uh, they had, uh, they used to make, uh, let me see what else. Um, hey, Ron, isn't that the Bud Ice light label? Isn't that a white label? Yes, that's right. Uh, I used to get it occasionally just for the bottle collection. Then I purged, I purged my collection of all light beers because it was getting too um, big. You know, it was getting too big. Um, they, let's see, they had, um, well, I'm not going to get into the, the malt liquor ice beers like Schlitz ice in the ice. In Mickey's the, ice. Uh, right. Which yeah. I still want to try. Which I love. Um, they used to make a uh, Schaefer ice, which I never got a handle, uh, a hold of. Um, but I got, I got a hold of some pretty good, interesting ice beers like the Schlitz ice. I saw that in Mobile, John, in uh, 19. No way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, what Schlitz, uh, Schlitz ice? Is that the not not the Schlitz malt liquor ice? No, are we? Okay, okay. Schlitz ice, Schlitz ice. In 1996, we were heading out on that big eastern uh, driving trip, and uh, I saw it. I, we had to stop to get gas or use the bathroom or something, and I went into the uh, gas station and I saw. I looked in the cooler and I gasped. I said, <gasps> I, th "I remember literally." I went. <gasps> And I told my friend Paul, I said, Schlitz ice. Well, as you can imagine, I immediately bought it. Just like when I was on US Highway 40, uh, and it's on the eastbound route, the eastbound uh, side of the highway, and the eastern side of Baltimore, Maryland, I stopped at this liquor store, and it's the kind where they have the man behind a glass thick thing, and he's got to turn that little turn thing to, like, it's really scary. But I. Right. I'm goofy like that. It's like, I got to go check it out. So I went in there. And I'm like, wow, this is like a place where they have probably murders. you know. But, and, they, and they're looking at and they're still and they're staring at you all the time. Like, you know, even if they don't have security cameras, but they're staring like, you know, all right, what is he doing? Right. And the guys are named like Khalil and uh, and and uh, Ismail. And they're looking at you up and down. Okay. And they're from they're from uh, uh, Jordan or uh, Syria. But anyway, you know that's cool. But um, <laughs> and if you try to rob the place, they're gonna come around the counter with like an AK forty seven. 
and, and, and all kind of handguns, you know, because they're like, well, those kind of places, they're going to come out blasting, you know. But anyway, because, um, I mean, they grew up in Palestine. It's like they're not scared to come out blasting. But anyway, I went in there, and I'm looking around, and I said, oh, Bo Ice, Bo Ice, you know I bought that. <laughs> and then I got in my car and took off. Scared like a, <laughs> I was scared like a dude who was scared. All right. Anyway, anyway, getting back to planet Earth, I did, um, and I bought the Paps Ice in Louisiana, but I only saw it west of the Mississippi River. Louisiana is a weird state. Like, there's some beers you can only get west of the Mississippi River, and then some you can get east of the Mississippi River. It's sort of like a demarcation of beer distribution. It's strange. But, um... I liked them all. They all tasted kind of like the same. You know, they all taste the same, more or less. If you did a taste challenge, you'd you'd have a you'd have a quite a challenge. Hey, y'all want me to read the comments? Sure. Yeah. I'll read the good, but I won't read the bad and the ugly. Let's see. Backwood Boondock Brew Review says Papa Top. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. I can, count, I can always count on Jean to. Uh, all right, let's see. David, says, shout out, Ron. Jacob Miller says, invite me, Ron. Chris Yeezel says, all the best to Elizabeth today. Looking forward to this ice cream video. Yeah, she hurt her leg, and I'm like freaked out, drinking, and like shook up. I'm, I couldn't eat, couldn't even get any kind of appetite tonight. Craig Swenson says, natural ice is the winner, in my opinion. In your next music-related video, you should talk about Celtic Frost if you're into it. I'm not into it, but I might do a long bunch of album reviews for Gary Newman. But then... What? My Gary Newman? What? The short people guy? That's Randy Newman, man. Randy oh, <laughs> sorry. Blinded by sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gary Newman is like... I'll take a slow car to China. And uh you're you know, his car that song Cars, you know, is the most famous song. All right, uh or or maybe I'll do uh The Runaways. All right, anyway, Joshua says, absolutely loving these American adjunct lager comparisons this past week. I know I've been loving doing them. Bart Robinson says, says, Good evening, fellas. Hope Elizabeth gets well soon, Jay. I know I'm freaking out about it. We're, I'm probably gonna cancel my trip to Texas. I don't have any desire to go on a road trip now. It like I don't care about that trip. I'm gonna cancel those reservations tomorrow probably. Uh, I might drive up there to Alabama and go see her. Working on a brown 18 ounce Bud Ice right now and a 40 ounce now. A four, wait a minute, what did this man just write? I'm working on a brown 18 ounce Bud Ice and then a 40 ounce natural ice is in the wings if need be. I hope you wait till tomorrow. This yeah. house get rocked tonight. Oh my goodness. Get oh, rocked. Good. Get rocked tonight. Gabe says, hi, Ron. I'm drinking a 32-ounce clear bottle of Bud Ice and a 12-ounce natural ice. Okay, I'll, then we want to call it quits after that. Jeff Kelto says, I had bush ice while in Virginia, but we don't sell it. We don't get it here in Cleveland. Now. And then uh, Jacob says, invite me. I said, I tried, but the link, Eric. check the link in Alcohol Eggs. Gabe says, Eric never put it up there. He couldn't figure out how to copy and paste it. I'm going to show you how to do some copy and paste. All right. <laughs> it's real easy. Okay, Gabe says, hi, Ron. Eric and Tom and Jean from Phoenix. See all your videos. Where's alcohol eggs? Thanks, brother. Thanks. Gabe, I told you that like a month ago. It's on Facebook. Okay, Bart says, old Milwaukee ice is still my favorite. Oh, right. I forgot about that one. That's in Atlanta. If you're in Atlanta, you may be able to find it. Here it is. Yeah. Now, Mercurial Magic Trees. <laughs> Mercurial Magic Trees says. William, William, William. Milwaukee. <laughs> there it is. He must be talking about Milwaukee's best ice is 6.9. Not anymore. Husker Legend says they taste better as you drink more of them. Yeah, that goes for a lot of stuff. <laughs> Bart says, I get the 24-ounce Keystone Ice for 98 cents a piece. Yeah, we don't get Keystone I can't, Ice. We no. don't get 24 ounces. Even 24 ounces of that, we don't get. We only get the 12 ounce. We don't get I Nuskin. can't compete with 98 cents either. We don't get Nuskin. We get Nuskin. Uh, you don't even get Keystone Ice down there, Ron? 
Not since about January 2014. Hey, John, what actual beers do you get in Mobile, if any? Uh, what type? Of, what do you mean, Eric? Uh, what type of beers? <laughs> you, you, see, you seem to have to travel a lot of distance. No, 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 no. Well, unless it's like beers like um, um, but, like Old English or, you know, like or even Old Tankard, things like that, um, I would have to travel. But most of the things we get... I know we did. We do get Eric and Bastard Ale, which is one of your favorites, uh, Eric. We get that here. Um, we get a lot of dead got um, dogfish. You know, some of the dogfish beers. We get some anchor beers as well, um, and you're able to get the singles of it as well. And then you get the usual suspects, you know, Bud Miller, whatever. Uh, and as far as the ice ice beers, we get Ice House. Which is they still got some of the six point nine percent, which is gonna be gone. Kings got the five point five. We got the Keystone Ice, uh, Natural Ice, and Bud Ice. Yeah. Now, William, what are you drinking now? I'm. I've got Bush Ice. Did someone say Keystone Ice? Oh, Keystone Ice. Yeah. Oh, Did someone man. say Mickey's Ice? Oh. I just man. said Mickey's Ice. You're uh, killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling out the uh, heavy hitters tonight. <laughs> now, now William, does the Mickey's does the Mickey's ice taste a lot like the Mickey's, the original Mickey's? I think it's I think it's better. It's a little more distinctive. Uh, See, it, I need to come up to North Carolina and get some Mickey's ice. Why do you yes, come on this thing out and put these beers in people's face that they cannot get? <laughs> hey, William, I'll <laughs> trade you. William, I'll trade you. Like an ice beer that doesn't taste like an ice beer. Yeah. Wait, Bill. Bill just said he's gonna treat you to a lot of money. I said, I said, William, I'll trade you a twenty-one pack of hams for that. Oh, really? Oh, what a deal! <laughs> I've already got a twenty-four pack in the fridge. <laughs> I'll trade you <laughs> twenty-one. Twenty-one is forty-five. Oh, let me say this. Let me let me say this real fast. Say hams ice again. Hams, <laughs> like, let, me say, let me say this real fast about hams. I hate to say this, okay, but I I put hams in the taste challenges. And I hate to say this, but Hams was not able to hold up. <sighs> Sorry, didn't work. It's not a bad, it's not a bad edge on Glogger either. Now, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to, when we come look to at, our, Look at David, David's like, you guys disgust me, you fuckers. <laughs> when we come to our closing comments tonight, I will have something to say about Hams. Okay. That's all I got to say right now. Now you hear Eric with that language? He thinks he's in a different hangout. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I thought it was uh, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. No talk about chains on this hangout. Hey. Um. We're gonna do the last comments. Uh, my last comment is that I don't like adore ice beers. I don't go to bed thinking about ice beers. I don't wake up thinking about ice beers, but they have their little niche and they're kind of fun to collect the cans and bottles. They're, they're worth buying, uh, especially like William said, the Anheuser-Busch ice beers are probably better than the other people's, but uh, they're fine. For people to go and give natural ice a zero out of 100, you know, that's the score. No, I'm sorry. On rate beer, it gets an NA. NA. It's so bad it won't score zero. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, all right, come on. Uh, to me, it's a credible product. I mean, how can they? How can Natural Ice be one of the top 20 selling beers in America for years, for probably a decade or more, but yet it's horrible? I mean, come on. John, why are you, why are you in that uh, heroic-looking pose there? <laughs> um, um. One, more, and one more thing. One more thing. Okay. <laughs> This is why, like, the kind of logic people use. They'll say this. They'll say, well, it doesn't matter if you put – it doesn't matter if natural ice is in the top 20 beers in the, in America every year for sales because that's – now, this is their uh, analogy. And if you're going to make an analogy, it should be logic-based. They'll say, well, that's like saying that just because a Big Mac is one of the top-selling burgers – it's a gourmet burger. Now, you see the problem with that logic? No one said it was a gourmet burger. He said it was one of the top selling burgers in America, so that meant it probably was okay to eat. So you're like taking this big leap. Well, 
no one is going to say a Big Mac is a gourmet burger. Well, no one's saying that. And it's like a juxtaposition next to this other contention that it's one of the top selling burgers. So we're saying it's probably not horrible. Okay, so we're saying natural ice is not horrible. You know, it's all right. On the other hand, we're not saying it's Duvel or uh, Pirat or uh, Guinness Foreign Extra Stout. You, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 All right. That's it. Everybody can give their final statements. I'm going to get wine now because I'm shook up. <laughs> I'm all shook up. Uh huh. I'm all Ooh, shook Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of power trios, for me, the cream of the crop, I would rate Natty Ice, yes. Bush Ice, and Bud Ice. I that would, would say... Like, that would be my position for the film. I would say the greatest trios are Rush, Triumph, and definitely not Green Day. <laughs> cream is the cream. Hey, what about Green Day? <laughs> cream, absolutely. They got go. Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, and Eric Clapton. End of end of story. No, 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 no. All right, now, uh, William, William uh, I agree. I like the natural ice. And we're just, what's the other one? I, I put uh, Bush Ice second and Bud Ice third. Really, yeah. Bud Ice third? I, I'll go along with that. I think I would uh, agree with that. Now I'm going to pour some of this Behringer White Zinfandel just because um, my nerves are wrecked. All right, Jean, uh, anybody else? Final statements. If uh, I ever took the brewery tour, I would ask him how you can brew a 5.5%. Bud Ice is 5.5% at 121 calories. To me, that <laughs> defies logic when they're 5% Budweiser, standard Budweiser is 145 calories. It is hard to believe. It That's why I went back to the ingredients. The fact that they're using more corn in these rather than the malts is a lesser sugar, lesser calorie content. That's the only explanation I have, but that would be one question I'll definitely ask if I ever took the brewery tour. I think you can't go wrong with any of the three here, personally. Absolutely. I, I like bush ice, bud ice, and natural ice. You really can't go wrong with any three, but I, no. I prefer bush ice over bud ice and natural ice, but that's my own personal opinion. Yeah, I don't think you'd be disappointed any of the three. No. There are subtle differences, but they're yeah. all three pretty. For the price level, I think most people feel like they got a pretty good bang for the buck for these things. So, so what are you saying? Will you just get what's cheapest of the three? I would say absolutely. Unless you sit down with all three and taste them and say, I have a preference for this one over that one or that one. If that is not the case, I would definitely buy on price and here in north carolina the bush ice is extremely cheap you get 12 pot cans for 567. So oh, for about six bucks can't beat that for a something that you know every time it's going to taste the same it's got the quality control you know it's, so uh that would be the way i would go price first yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, i agree uh, with uh, that. but you can't go wrong with any of the three no you're right uh eric brenner it's kind of like nice right I do think the 5.5 .5 hits the sweet spot, though, but. You should try to mix them. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a pretty, that's actually, a, that's actually not a bad idea. Okay, Eric and, uh, and Nate. All right, here you go. Sure, do it. Ice beers, I said it a little bit earlier. For me, your standard, um, your standard um, malt liquors, like uh, like an Old English or a King Cobra or a Colt 45, those kind of styles of beers really, I think, appeal to the ice beer drinker and are really toe-to-toe -to -toe with those kind of beers. So you probably, if you're looking for a beer in that style and at that price point, you really can't find too much of a difference between those kind of beers. So I'd say go ahead and buy those kind of beers. For me, like I mentioned with the, which, with the ice beers that I've had in the past, I, for the three power trio here, my favorite is definitely Bud Ice, but unfortunately I've not had Bush Ice, so I can't really say that's my favorite of the three, but between Natural and Bud Ice, I would say Bud Ice, but I really am fond of actually Molson Ice, so oh, I would say Molson Ice is a really great one. But in general, I would say the malt 
liquor drinker should drink iced beers. The iced beer drinkers should drink malt liquors if they like those kind of styles of beers. And I think these would appeal to the general um, premium lager beer drinker from around the globe. So you say they're interchangeable then, Eric? I think that I, I think for those two styles, they are pretty interchangeable. I don't find a huge amount of difference, really, to tell you the truth. I'm going to defect I from that. There is a difference, though, because yeah, like, yeah. Williams, I think the ice beers, you get a lot more crispness. That's why I would I would defect from from Eric on that. Um, I would definitely take this over my old English 800. Yeah. yeah. No. No. What about Mickey's? Old English and Mickey's, they're fine and all, but you get a lot more like sloppy presentation. I don't mean yeah. sloppy like well, like not sloppy, done sloppy. well. I don't mm -hmm. mean like it's not brewed well. It's just it's kind of like sloppy. It's hard to say. It's like a, a sloppy Joe is sloppy. A, a, a unrefined. No, it's like um, sweet and sugary and not yeah. as crisp. Yeah. These are definitely within the lager family. I don't think anybody would like to say adjunct loggers would drink one of these and be disappointed. No. It's well within that, under that same tent. So I think, and where the malt liquors tend to be a little bit more of an outlier, yeah. they start to get in some characteristics that are a little bit different. Yeah. I think these stay with definitely underneath the AAL tent, so to speak. I go along with that for sure. Now, uh, last comments, because then I'm, I'm going to talk about what's coming up. Yeah. Um, Enjoyable. I like ice beers. They're enjoyable, um, but um, give me something that's a little less ABV. You know, like Ice House or Bud Ice, which I usually get. You know, in terms of standby beers before I get the usual lagers like Milwaukee's Best or Little High Life or Genuine Draft. Um, you know, the ice beers are like they say; they're very refreshing, crisp. Easy to go down again. Perfect for this time of year right now. In fact, any time of year, depends on what you, what foods you're pairing it with. You know, whether it be burgers, tacos, Mexican food, Caribbean food, whatever it is, it is a it complements you know the food you're eating. So, oh yeah, tacos. Drunken one says, "Hey guys, sorry I'm late." Well, that's okay. I mean, you know, drunken one, you can't do a hangout. On a 24-hour loop every day, right? Um, Mickey's Ice is what Please Leave says. Yeah, I like Mickey's Ice, but I can't get it. Um, uh, Bill, you enjoying it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. You know, the common theme really tonight and, and for the last two weeks really is, is you know, it's good for what it is. I mean, there's always been this qualifier, right? Now, I, I've I've learned a little something tonight. I got to tell you, I I I prefer, for me personally, I prefer the natural ice over the bud. And tonight was the first time I I tried natural ice. So, and I like it better than the bud ice. Wow. But in terms of you know, it is what it is type of deal. I want to, if, if somebody, if anybody is, is this deep into this recording, they need to know this, okay? I want to, I want to, I want a retraction. I want to print a, a, a retraction as my distinguished colleague, William Kepley uh, would say, um, about hams, okay? We examined hams last week. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, as a follow-up, the best thing about ham's beer is the logo on the package okay <laughs> here's what i mean specifically about that i drank two hams last week i woke up the next day with a headache like i had been partying all Whoa. Night. over two beers over two 12 ounce beers. Whoa. Oh, man. I, I drank a lot of hams and never made me sick, but I, it just didn't hold up in the taste challenges. So, so this is a warning. Like I say, if somebody is getting this deep into this recording, then, then hopefully oh, they'll, they'll catch this. All right. But, but two, two beers in, not to have to stay with me all day like I've been partying. Morning. Stay away from me. 
That's Sorry. Right. Jacob is pretty offended by your comment there, Bill. <laughs> my heart. Hey, Jean, Jean, are you watching the Tampa Bay Rays game, by the way? I am. What's going on? Because I, I was kind of like – Sox up 1-0. The, the Red Sox are up one to nothing. Yep. Oh. Bottom four. Bottom of the four. Oh, Ryan, you better – That game. game. Oh, I, I, I'm about to go watch it. Don't worry. <laughs> that game has been blocked out in my area for whatever the reason. They think that those folks who live in Mobile, Alabama, are closer to Tampa Bay. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of odd. We're not nowhere near close to Tampa Bay, Florida. But for whatever the reason, that game has been blacked out on ESPN. So um, I'm – I'm watching um, Mr. Mercedes on Audience Network, a new show that, that came on tonight. Sense. What do they think? That Mobile gets Sun Network? Yeah, and then they, they, they when I hit, they find the alternative, and Sun Network is not on on my tier. So, like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'll watch MLB Network or whatever else, you know. Oh, no. ESPN2 right. has been airing, what, the top 25 college – football games in of last season so you know right why, why watch, why, 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 right why watch something live that's happening now when you can watch a bunch of old recordings um yes i can watch it on youtube pretty much you know yeah right hey. who wants to watch a live event that's happening now when they can watch a bunch of old material um coming I got something up, to say ron what exactly so so I got to defend my hams here. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Defend hams. <laughs> you, got 20 seconds. you got 20 seconds, so you better defend quick. So I got off work the other night, and I had a headache. And I had two 12-ounce hams, <laughs> and it cured my headache. <laughs> and it only cost me 60 cents in the process. <laughs> <laughs> look like you and Bill. Look like you and Bill gonna have to do a meetup. Where do you live? Again? That's what I'm talking about, man. Defend hams. Where do you live again? Where do you live again? Indiana. Oh, that's gonna be a big meetup because you're part of Indiana. Uh, Lafayette. I know where Lafayette's at. Oh, named after the Marquis de Lafayette. We have a Lafayette, Louisiana. There's a Lafayette, California. I think there's like half the states have a Lafayette. Um. Uh, Lafayette August, Street, Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. August 16th is the best bang for the buck. That's that's going to be a hard one to figure out. I'm not sure I can figure out what is the best bang for the buck beer. Um, August 23rd is Bush, and I got my 32-ounce bottle in the fridge. Milwaukee's best premium lager, premium lager, uh, back to premium. That ain't, pack. that ain't the best bang for the buck. What? Oh, excuse me, Genesee, Genesee Cream Ale, a uh, thirty. Hell yeah, brother! Now that might, now that might be sixteen. Okay. A Mobile sixteen thirty nine four thirty pack. Fifteen four thirty rack in Massachusetts. Yeah, okay, so a dollar more. Okay, all right. So August sixteenth is the best bang for the buck, and August twenty third is uh, Bush Beer. We're gonna examine Bush Beer. Remember Bush Beer. Like David Bowie said, do you remember what happened to the craft beer trio? Hold on, hold on. Do you remember? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Young American, young American. Yeah, he got it all stirred up by his American. hands. <laughs> Resident young American. All oh, right. She was the young American. <laughs> actually, I, actually, I had actually I had that album, uh, Station to Station, nineteen seventy six. Um. August 30th is the big three historic craft beers. Anchor Steam, uh, Samuel Boston Lager, Boston Lager, and the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Yep, that's the three big ones. Well, I set them out of order. It's Anchor Steam, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, and uh, Boston Lager. And uh, Yingling. Those... And Yingling. Craft beer? We said craft beer. We didn't say... Uh, craft beer? Craft beer? We didn't say... We didn't craft say... Beer? We didn't well, say Yingling... We didn't say Yingling likes adjunct lagers. Sorry. Yingling likes to proclaim their part of <laughs> Yingling likes to proclaim themselves they're part of the craft beer movement. But well, you Yingling know. is wrong. I know. I, I know. know. That's okay, Joe. I self-identify as vice president of the world, but nobody called me yet. Um, <laughs> 
September 6th, we've got sleeper beers, beers that aren't oh. want to be. Another William Kepley production. Uh, That's a trillium beer, right? Might be. I've never. Okay, September 13th is Milwaukee's Best Ice. Oh, God. The real oh, Milwaukee's man. Best I Ice. I can do that one. We should go get the 6.9 up here. Oh, no, but by that time, you'll be getting the original. <laughs> when is that round? September 13th. I think I have to drive to Memphis to get that again, or maybe Mississippi. I don't know. Rouses can just <laughs> put it on your account, right? Yeah. I know one thing. I'm not driving back to Mobile to bring you two cans. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then September 20th, oh, I feel played. Though. I feel played because I brought Jean a big old three-liter bottle of Paul Masson Burgundy. Did he make a video for it? No, he did not. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sam. Uh oh. No video. No video. Up, John. Because Look I was enjoying the wine. It was that freaking good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah. Three liters worth. Holy crap, John. Come on. Yeah. Man. Uh, wrong. I know. Wrong. Wrong. You couldn't save one glass to do a review? No. Nope. No. Me and a friend of mine who likes red wine, you know, she enjoyed it too. Oh, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't get my lady to drink red wine. You know, anything that's sweet, like, you know, like Arbor Mist or, uh, you know, something like that, or maybe Sangria she'll drink. But, you know, anything like Paul Masson, anything has a little bitterness or sweet, but more bitterness and sweetness, she won't touch it. So I felt like, I felt like Polly and Goodfellas. It was like I was never nothing to you. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. Now I gotta turn. Now I gotta turn my back on you. Hey, do I amuse you? Do I amuse? Do I make you laugh? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Paulie, I say Paulie. I didn't say Tommy. Um, <laughs> then, uh, September twentieth is Ice House, the real Ice House, not the fake Ice House. I'll be there for that one. Me Lots too. of in there. I yeah. love me some Ice House, brother. Talking about Sean Connery, not Roger Moore. Um. Well, anyway. Sometimes, you know how it goes, sometimes you bring people a huge bottle of wine and they don't make the video, but it's all good. <laughs> John's going to out, John. Look out. I know. <laughs> but that's all right, because John brought me to see the Moon Pie store. Yes. What? He did, say, he did say he liked the wine, but that's all. And what else did I bring you? I brought, oh, some beer or some kind of beer. I can't remember. I don't know. Something that says something with the label, I don't know, Steel 6 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Steel Reserve. Oh, yeah. 6%. Yeah. I felt bad. I felt bad because I was staring right at that Milwaukee's Best Ice 5.6 and I didn't buy it. That's just bad. No, not the no. 5 point. I mean the 5.9. Not the 5.9. I felt, I, felt, I felt funny, you know, but I, I could have bought it. Two dot. Two quart cans for two twenty five. That's bad stuff. Two fifty. No, that's not bad stuff. Yes, Bill, you're going to be in there for that one. Where Milwaukee's best? I, I, I'm going to come in on observer status. I'm going to drink some good. <laughs> <laughs> Do not in front my video hangouts. <laughs> I agree. Cause like George Thurgood said, I drink alone. Hey, anyway, um, anyway, that's it. We've exhausted this thread. Some people are saying, "Thank the Lord." Uh, <laughs> we ain't going. We we're not going overtime. I have to go put clothes in the dryer. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway, uh, I got no baseball to watch. I got nothing to watch except Mr. Mercedes and wait until. Nine o'clock for MLB Network to show some baseball right now. I'm so. going to watch the Red Sox and the Rays. All right, thanks. I'm not, I don't have Justin that game. Is going for winner, fellas. Tonight, I need Bush Irons was my strange bro. I, I need my to stream some list. baseball games. Oh, yeah. William, William, William's, William's trying to reference Strange Brew from 1983, the movie that was based on the SCTV uh, skit. It was uh, my brave Ulysses tonight, and the sunshine. Is that the mind. one with Bob and Doug? <laughs> Bob and Doug. Andy. Yeah, the Great White North. Uh, yeah, William yeah. is referencing now. He's referencing uh, um, uh, uh, the 1967 album called uh, 
Disraeli gears. And Bush Ice is my first slaker. Oh, right. The uh, cream Falstaff uh, television right. commercial. I'm, hey, William, I'm with you right here, buddy. Okay. Hey. And everybody drink one tonight for Glenn Campbell. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Cheers. So there's a load of compromise on the road to my rhinestone cowboy. Rest in peace. And I want to be where the lights are shining on me like a rhinestone cowboy. Great yeah. rhinestone cowboy. cowboy. Yeah. He played with the Beach Boys. He broke the crossover between country and pop. Had his own variety show. A great guy. Here's to Truly. Oh God, can this can this end? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three cheers to the wrecking crew. All right, folks.